I'm Alan Fryer. I'm a professor in the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences here at UK, and my specialization is hydrogeology. So I'm a geologist by training, and I look at how water moves and how the movement of water affects water quality and how human activities affect water quality. We are here in one of the two bowls around the W.T. Young Library. Uh, we're in the bowl that's closer to Rose Street, and this was a sinkhole. In fact, the library was built on a sinkhole. The story I remember is that it took over 200 large diameter concrete pilings to reinforce the library structure and in effect to fill the cave underneath it. But that didn't eliminate the cave system, it just altered it. So part of what I deal with is the interaction of stormwater with groundwater. I focus primarily on groundwater flow and groundwater quality and how stormwater is affected by and affects groundwater really depends upon the kind of terrain you're in. And we are in something called karst, which is a special type of terrain that develops on rocks that dissolve like limestone. Kentucky is world famous for karst. Karst poses some special challenges in terms of drainage management. So for example, in the sinkhole, you can see that there are places where there are boulders that have been placed that are surrounding drains that look like grates for storm sewers, and that's what they are. And so what is happening here is that stormwater drainage is being managed and being diverted into an existing cave network. The impact of development and particularly urbanization complicates things, not only in terms of the flow, but also the water quality. In terms of flow, what often happens is where you have development of pavement or roofs that that water is less likely to infiltrate, to soak into the ground, and so it means that runoff is accelerated. What happens in karst terrain is that because the rock tends to dissolve, you have these places where it sinks, these sinkholes, which are often connected, plumbed, to springs via conduit and cave networks. And so you have something that is kind of a hybrid in between stream flow and conventional groundwater flow. As a result, water moves much more rapidly than it would for conventional groundwater flow, and that has impacts on how quickly pollutants can move as well. So this is a good example of stormwater infrastructure being superimposed on or integrated with the existing subsurface drainage. Other examples in Lexington include McConnell Springs Park, which drains much of the Wolf Run watershed. When we talk about watersheds, typically we think of surface water, but in fact you have surface water and groundwater both moving within watersheds, and they don't always go the same way. If you have chemicals put on lawns, like fertilizer, if you have animal waste, if you have leaking sanitary sewers or septic tanks, any of those can affect water quality. In the case of stormwater in particular, anything that's on the surface can potentially be carried in runoff into the subsurface. And so some of the best practices that need to be adopted to address that include such things as more vegetated cover, as we see in this bowl, that's going to limit the rate of runoff. Um, limiting how lawn chemicals are applied, uh, potentially limiting application of chemicals on streets like de-icers in winter, and re-engineering, or in some instances, allowing nature to re-engineer the drainage pathways, such as was done on the Picadome Golf Course behind the Campbell House on South Broadway and Mason Headley, 
where the stream that feeds the sinkhole that leads to McConnell Springs was restored several years ago and was made to be more winding, more like a natural stream, and more vegetation was planted along it to limit the rate at which water is carried into that sinkhole, which in turn limits the rate at which water moves to the springs.